Now that the dust has pretty much settled on the Arch Linux grub issue, I felt like it was a good time to do a bit of a, a bit of a retrospective, to clear the air about a lot of the issues that were brought up, and a lot of the things that we didn't exactly know the full extent of. I also had a conversation on Twitter with Morton Linderwood, otherwise known as Foxbron, who was one of the sort of core maintainers involved in Arch Linux. More like he found my thread and wasn't exactly happy with what I was saying. Obviously, he can't speak for every Arch maintainer, but he was a key player in this case. Firstly, I need to make this very clear because people keep spreading this around and they keep being completely wrong. The bug with Grub on Arch Linux was not fixed. The bug report was closed with Foxbron saying this is not a bug. The fix that was implemented was adding in a warning message telling you to go and fix it yourself. As of right now, this is the only fix provided. A note saying run grub install, run grub make config, nothing more, nothing less. There is one commit after this addressing a separate issue. Grub was booting really slowly, and then this commit is supposed to address that. I have no idea if it is, but that commit was there. If you do not take these steps, the problem will still be present today. Now, we need to address the biggest and weirdest part of this whole situation. Why were Arch systems only partially affected? Why was it not consistently affecting every person using Grub? So we know for a fact that it was only affecting UEFI systems because the change was made to the UEFI code. But just as both Grub install and Grub make config were the solution to the issue, they also happened to be the trigger. So something you've probably done a bunch of times is you modify your Grub config. Let's say you want to change out your Grub theme, you want to change a Grub setting, maybe you want to go and add like a new Grub boot entry for example, and you're going to go and run Grub make config and regenerate that config. And that's the problem. Running Grub make config without first running Grub install and updating into one of the affected versions is what caused the breakage. And this is exactly why the Arch derivatives were way more affected. Because a lot of Arch derivatives have a Pac-Man hook. When you update Grub, they will automatically regenerate your Grub config. And by doing that, it's not running Grub install first. By doing that, it caused the system to break if you didn't first fix it before doing a reboot. Arch Linux, on the other hand, doesn't have this Pac-Man hook. The issue, though, is that even though Arch doesn't have this Pac-Man hook and isn't going to break instantly, if you don't address the issue going down the line, it's going to break at some point. Basically, if you don't apply the fix, you turn your system into a ticking time bomb. So if you haven't done the fix and your system seems like it's working just fine, please go and do so. Now, if you've rerun Grub Make Config and everything's still working like it should, then you're good to go. But if you haven't run Grub Make Config again, please go and do the fix. And due to the discrepancy of affected users, at least the visual discrepancy, Foxbron places a lot of the blame for the hype of this issue on the derivatives. Few Arch users encountered this issue, and the subreddit posts were because of scaremongering. And a bit further down, I said this right here. I'll concede that it was a more pertinent issue for Endeavor OS. However, Arch absolutely did not handle the issue with the urgency required. While it affected fewer users, those users were still just as confused by the problem and only knew how to fix it because downstream helped. A minority of users, not fewer. That's just linguistic semantics. Fewer than the major group would be the minority group. It's still important to realise how few Arch people were affected by this. And I disagree that the number of users are an important factor here when it's a bootloader packaged by Arch. And it's clearly affected enough users that some decided to post about it online. People post PSAs on the subreddit for issues they introduced themselves with no bug reports to Arch. People post a lot of nonsense online. Same thing here. A user found the issue in testing and posted on the subreddit instead of notifying the Arch team. It did make its way into stable, so... Yeah. Um, not just in testing. 
Now, the major issue I took with this whole situation isn't the fact that there was a bug in Grub. Code bases are going to have bugs. Sometimes you're going to have to do some manual intervention. And I found out fairly recently, actually, that if you update your Grub package without also running Grub install, you haven't actually updated Grub. So there's actually literally no reason to ever update Grub unless you're running Grub install. Ignoring all that, the issue that I took is the time it took for the Arch team to respond. Because Endeavor OS had their write-up out explaining everything going on, explaining the problem, and explaining how to fix it literally the following day. So maybe the Arch team didn't really know, you know, what was going on with the packaging side, with the development side, how they were going to address it, you know, going forward into the future. But it was well established what they could tell the affected users to fix their system. But they didn't do that. So I asked about that. It's easy for Endeavor OS to post something and then continue to wait for Arch to resolve the issue completely. They don't maintain Arch after all. And that's totally fair. They don't. They maintain a downstream distro and can only do certain things. Sure, they're in no position to address the problem upstream, but they did make it clear what manual intervention the user needed to take to ensure a working system before they decided they wanted to mess with their grub config again. They decided to publish a workaround because a large number of the users were affected. They default to grub and have the hooks. We didn't publish anything before we settled on the correct course of action, fewer users had issues in Arch, and we didn't need to stress. Now, considering the links of the post and some minor modifications to the Arch wiki page on installing Grub, how long do you think it actually took to make these changes? Maybe like, I would say at most an hour, maybe two hours to do? Well, it actually took this. We decided on the fix on Sunday, edited the wiki and drafted the announcement on Monday, and then published on Tuesday. Do remember, this was the Endeavor OS post. This was out the following day. But this took two days to write. Look, I'm not saying that they're not allowed to take their time with it, but that seems a little bit excessive for like 80 words. We also need to address, is Arch shipping a Git release of Grub? Absolutely yes. And it's not their fault. It is the Grub teams because they've taken so long to release a new version. The latest tag release of Grub is 2.06, 15 months ago. And it's not like Grub doesn't have many open CVEs and many bugs with it that seriously need to be addressed. And the only way to address those is by running a Git release. Now, the next version of Grub 2.12 is slated for October, but during this period, there's not really been any other option. You either run a Git release, or you run an insecure version of Grub. Neither is really a good solution. Pretty much, the only good solution here was not using Grub, which I'm sure some people like to hear, but isn't exactly viable if you want to use Grub. So at the end of the day, who was at fault? Obviously, the user is probably going to blame both Arch and Grub because they don't really care. All they care about is the thing they were using isn't working, and that's a problem. And what I've seen upstream with the Grub mailing list is they never really settled on who is at fault. So, Robbie Harwood is the person who made the original commit. And what they said is this right here. Why doesn't Grub on the MBR get updated when you install a new Grub package? That seems like a real issue here. What am I missing? Regardless, if we can't count on FW setup being updated, then I think we need to go back to the original version of my patch, which doesn't have dash dash is supported. The reason why it doesn't get updated is what I mentioned earlier, that on Arch, you don't automatically update Grub when you install a new version of Grub, and nowhere in the documentation did it say that is something you need to be doing. So everybody who's running Arch Linux was actually running a version of Grub that they installed when they first installed Grub. And some people like Javier Canillas are basically in agreement with Robbie. 
I agree with Robbie here, either don't regenerate your grub config file in an installed system, or update the grub core image in the embedding gap too. Anything but that feels like an uphill battle to me and would just add too much complexity. And then including this bit from the previous email, indeed, the original patch didn't use that option, it was added to address some feedback that Robbie had on an earlier version. All other Linux-based distributions and derivatives that I know of, may that be Debian-based, RH-based, SUSE-based, though I lack experience with more exotic ones like Slackware, Mandriva, NixOS, and things like that, go a long way to make sure that Grub is automatically updated on every package upgrade by virtue of additional, rather complex scripts that try to detect where it was installed to previously, and importantly, to synchronize that up both in the boot petition as well as its core image loader, wherever that might be. Otherwise, upgrading the Grub package serves no purpose since users will never see any changes. Now, there is a very good reason why Arch doesn't automatically rerun Grub install, and Foxbron chimed in on this thread to explain why that is the case. Let's make a clear distinction between how Arch, the package upstream in this case, and how derivative distros like Manjaro, the downstream user of this package, use Grub though. The intent behind the packaging on our end does not match up with the expectations you are conveying here. Arch doesn't make assumptions about the user's systems, and since grub install is a complicated command, we can't automate this for users. If they use secure boot, they may need to include modules, where the ESP is located, and so on. Or even just, you know, having your ESP in a separate location, having your boot directory not mounted, and things like this. These are all totally normal things to be doing. While all that is reasonable, this one, not so much. Arch requires the users to know how this command works, and it's a fair assumption as it's documented in our install instructions, the fact that derivative distros rely on this decision from Arch is their problem and should not necessarily be a grub upstream issue. Arch does not require users to know how this command works. Do you know how I know this? Because Arch ships a command called Arch install. An Arch install allows you to automate your Arch installation. You never have to read the Arch wiki, and you can have a functional Arch system. This was true like a year and a half, two years ago. And if you want this to still be true, you cannot ship Arch install. I personally don't want it to be true. I like there being an official automated way to install your Arch Linux system. Anyway, following that he said, if Grub needs the configuration and Grub EFI binaries to stay in sync, then it'll be much better for Grub install to support a config file like how people end up using Grub make config. So rather than having to like run this weird command to generate your config from an existing config, actually just use a regular config file. Then shipping a hook that simply runs Grub install would be simpler. And I do agree this would probably be a massive improvement. Now, I wish I could say that there was more going on upstream, but not really. There's two extra emails, but nothing is actually settled on. It just sort of ends, and that's it. So, you know, um, <laughs> it is what it is, I guess. Make sure you go and rerun grub install and rerun grub make config and everything's going to be good. Overall, this was a giant mess of a situation. The bootloader is something you expect to pretty much always be working. Maybe at some point in the nearish future, I should do a video on swapping to refined or swapping to systemd boot. I've been meaning to do this for a very long time. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I don't plan to do these retrospective follow-up videos for everything into the future, but when there is this really big topic that does have a lot of things that I really still want to address, maybe you'll see something here and there. If you like the idea, let me know. Anyway, uh, if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to something, bear pay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.